Hi and welcome to the Happiness Safari podcast. My name is Hadin. I help nomad entrepreneurs on their life's journey to find themselves and create a positive mind and health set so they don't burn out while reaching their goals. Have you tried meditation techniques maybe for years and couldn't find one which works? I have good news for you because today on the podcast I speak to Dr. Dawson Church. Dawson, a scientist at its core, is an award-winning science writer with three best-selling books to his credit. In 2007, he founded the National Institute for Integrative Healthcare, a non-profit institution dedicated to educating and researching evidence-based healing modalities. The two primary methods he uses are eco-meditation and emotional freedom technique, EFT. He has worked with over a thousand pain clients with average symptoms reductions of 68%. Its largest program, the Veteran Stress Solution, has offered free treatment to over 20,000 veterans with PTSD over the past decade. One of his studies demonstrates that 86% of veterans with clinical PTSD were subclinical after six sessions of EFT and remained so on follow-up. His groundbreaking research has been published in many prestige scientific journals. He shares how to apply these breakthroughs to health and athletic performance through EFTUniverse.com, one of the most visited alternative healing sites on the web. From today's episode, you will learn how to start your day in a blissful state. How you can reduce PTSD symptoms with eco meditation, how you can come into heart coherence, how you can tap away your trauma, how you can come to peace with your past, and how you can clear your phobias by tapping. This interview is truly so fascinating. Uh, Dr. Dawson Church is such an inspiring guy and I just love the interview. I cannot wait to share it with you. Um, I hope it, it does blow your mind just as much as it did mine and you will learn a lot from it and you will try the eco meditation. I will put all the links in the show notes for you and I really hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome, Dawson, to the Happiness Safari podcast. I'm so, so delighted to have you here on the podcast, a real scientist and author, and yeah, people heard it in the intro, but yeah, you uh, studied happiness, basically, <laughs> and the science behind that for a long, long time. So I'm yeah, uh, very much looking forward to have a chat with you and tell me how you are today, first of all. Well, I began, Nadine, this morning with meditation, and meditation is a great way to get happy. And in my book, This Brain, I talk about the neurochemicals of happiness that you release when you're in deep meditation, and they include neurochemicals like dopamine and serotonin and anandamide and oxytocin, and all of these make you feel really, really good. Really so good. if you start your day off that way by beginning your time, your wake, your wakefulness each day, by moving into that state of awareness, by by connecting with a level of reality beyond your own local, your own mundane everyday reality, you release all those neurochemicals in your brain, you begin the day feeling wonderful. So I highly recommend that's the way we start our days. Yeah, I recommend meditation as well. Um, yeah. But then we can uh, dive in there. So how long do you meditate for? Well, if I'm in the middle of a regular work week, usually for about an hour, if I am going away, say, for a weekend or maybe I have a week-long retreat, I'll meditate for usually two or three hours. It, it, it just, it, it's so pleasurable. It is, you feel so good in your body, you feel so good in your mind, you feel so positive and optimistic that it's actually hard to, 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 to bring yourself back to everyday reality. So, um, you don't need to meditate for an hour. Usually half an hour in the morning is enough. But when you get into these states of uh, awareness, you you want to stay there. So that's why traditionally people went and um, removed themselves from every, everyday, everyday existence. So often, like, for example, if we go back 100 years, 1,000 years, 10,000 years, people went to a monastery, they went to a hermitage, they went into the desert or the forest, and they really spent intense time in those pursuits. Now, though, we have a very different life, very different world, 
And so we begin by meditation. So we start our days that way. But then after that 30 minutes to 60 minutes, you can move into your your everyday world. You can start taking care of your children. You can start doing your job. You can move into working with, with your team or with your clients. And so there's this um, structure to a day where we begin the day with orientation to that, that state of bliss, of awareness, of consciousness. And then we move from that into everyday activities. So usually in the morning, you want to go there, but then you return there. We aren't going off into the hermitage or into the convent. We're actually here in the office. We're in the, in, in the hospital. We're in the school where, where, where people are. And that's the cycle I think we're much, much more relevant to, to modern human beings. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. But then how do you get into the state? Because I have a lot of uh, clients and also when I do retreat, like people struggle with meditation to really, you know, they say like, stop thinking and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> into You call yeah, it a blissful you... state, but I know for a lot of people, meditation is not a very <laughs> pleasurable experience. You know, it's very uncomfortable and you're just trying to, to sit there. And people don't know what yeah. What they're doing basically yeah we can't stop thinking our our brains and our minds are designed to think mm -hmm. and if you think about your distant ancestors a hundred thousand years ago five hundred thousand years ago they needed to be really aware of the situation around them so our minds just constantly are scanning the environment for especially anything that might be wrong like if you had an ancestor a hundred thousand years ago who was focused on um just being joyful, being happy, that ancestor would likely be the one that missed the problems in their environment. They would miss the the tiger creeping up or the bear uh, or the snake. I mean, they would they would miss those things because they they weren't focused on the on the bad stuff. So our brains evolved in an environment of threats, and we are just hardwired to keep on looking around us for things that might be a threat to us. And that's just the, what, what, the way our brains are. So our brains are not designed to be still. <clears throat> Minds are not designed to be still. They're designed to be highly active. And if you had an ancestor 100,000 years ago who had a still mind and a calm body, that person might not be aware of environment, environmental threats and get and get you know one of the become one of the people that got weeded from the gene pool. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you are just going along with your your evolutionary role, and that means that your mind is unlikely to be still. And even these Tibetan monks we study with MRI studies and EEG studies, we find that it takes them often decades of practice, ten thousand hours or more, to achieve that that still mind oh. so what i have people do when they follow my meditation method which again is not really mine it's just a combination of of, of scientifically proven techniques like reduce slowing your meditation. breathing down you call it eco meditation eco yeah meditation. it's yes. eco eco meditation yes. okay and it's it's really simple but it involves just physically shifting your functioning in in specific ways like we have you relax your tongue which relaxes your whole body because it, it signals your vagus nerve to uh to go into re relaxation mode which which affects your whole body it, we have you slow your breathing down so without stilling your mind your breathing breathing slows down and that then cues your body that there's no threat in the environment. So there are these five techniques we combine in eco meditation. And then without slowing your mind, you reach this really deep state. And it only takes about five minutes to get there. And when we have hooked people up to EEGs, we find that they begin, they do these, these cues. In five minutes, they have a complete shift in the way their brain function is, is, is working. The, the emotional brain calms down that threat assessment machinery of the brain dials way back so it's still happening we're still looking for things going on in the environment that might be bad because you know if you had a uh, fire alarm go from the building or you had a big sound and there was a necessity to take evasive action you can still do that but that part of the brain is dialed way 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 back and then we focus on dialing up the function of the bliss networks 
and the attention networks and the compassion networks of the brain. That's when we feel really good. So it's a combination of the two things. And you can do those two things. You can dial down your threat focus, dial up your, your happiness focus, and then suddenly you feel much better. It takes no effort and you don't have to spill your mind. Wow, <laughs> that sounds very promising because I think that's a problem in um, yeah our modern society, right? I mean, we're still kind of trimmed for survival, but we do want to be happy <laughs> and we don't really know how to, to combine that. So it's nice. Yeah, there was a... There's a great story on the eco meditation website of a uh, uh, because we, we get emails from people every week about I tried eco meditation this happened but there's one man who emailed us a long long story about three pages long and he was a veteran who uh, served in 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 the Iraq War and he had severe PTSD after that he'd seen a lot of uh, violence sites that he lost a lot of friends in the war he had se severe ptsd and so after he left the army the act the military actually paid for him to do all kinds of courses uh he actually got got a trip to japan to go be in a zen monastery he sat there in the zen monastery for many many months uh, and learned zen style meditation tried other meditations and and did not achieve what he'd hoped for, which was a freedom from those PTSD symptoms. Mm. But he then one day was thinking about what more can I do? And he was just searching the web and stumbled across the ecomeditation.com website. And so he just followed the instructions. They're all there free on the website. And you just follow the instructions one after the other. And suddenly he was in that state of deep bliss and he began to breathe. He began to relax the way the website tells you to do. And suddenly he said, I was there. I was in that place I longed to, to be in for so many years. And I found freedom from all of those intrusive thoughts. And as he began to do eco meditation, then over the next few weeks, the flashbacks went away. The nightmares went away. All those PTSD symptoms reduced. And we now have studies showing that it produces, eco meditation produces dramatic drops in anxiety, depression, phobias, PTSD, traumatic stress. And it only takes about a month before you start seeing the effects in your body. So you spend a half hour each day, do the meditation, and you'll literally feel your mind and body changing. And it's not a big investment of time. It's only a half hour every day, mm -hmm. but it, it totally shifts your whole perspective on life. Wow. <laughs> um, so who founded the, the eco meditation? I put it all together in 2008, 2009. Okay. I was doing keynote speeches and interacting with a lot of scientists at a lot of conferences. And I thought, we know that heart coherence from heart math, the quick coherence technique is really effective mm -hmm. at calming people. We know that EFT Tapping on acupressure points, tapping is really effective. We know that mindfulness is effective. We know that neurofeedback, biofeedback are effective. So there are all these different groups of people who are doing this wonderful research. And I thought back then, what would happen if we stacked them all one on top of the other? What if we did the quick coherence technique and then did some tapping, then did some mindfulness, and then did some neurofeedback, then did some self-hypnosis, and, and we did all of these in a sequence? And I tried it myself. It was just amazing. It was so easy to drop into that state. So I then asked the organizer at a conference I was presenting at in 2009, I asked her if I could do it with a whole conference, with a whole group of about 200 people. And so I did that with those 200 people. And I was amazed that not only were they coming into heart coherence, the whole room, everyone in the room came into heart coherence together. So we now had 200 people all in coherence. And in, in my book, Mind to Matter, I talk about manifestation and about uh, having things happen in the outside world for you. And what's crucial in manifestation and relaxation is coherence, heart coherence, brain coherence. So I watched all 200 people come into coherence together. And after that experience, many came up to me and said, Dawson, I've never been able to meditate successfully. I've struggled with meditation. I've tried courses and books mm -hmm. and just nothing seemed to work. And then today, doing it together in the room, finally, I was able to drop in there. So a lot of the people who write into us say, I've struggled, nothing worked for me. I did eco meditation and finally it did. So it's just great to see those effects in people's lives. 
Yeah, congratulations for like putting that together because that's uh, incredible itself, right? There are these different techniques out there and sometimes we just have to yeah, com combine them because they are all yes. already powerful in itself. So maybe depending what you're struggling with, but then if you put them together, then they have so much more effect actually. Um, they, they have a cumulative effect, yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned you put this on the on your website, on the eco uh, meditation website. So do you read the instructions and you do it yourself, or do you also have guided meditations to to buy or on, on YouTube or somewhere? Where yeah. The uh, the instructions are all there. You can read them and follow them. There's also a free track you can use. And we've now done quite a few studies on people using that track. It's 22 minutes long, so it's not very long, but it's a guided meditation. And I recommend you use a guided meditation because it's much easier just to listen, put on a headset, listen to somebody yeah. guiding you through all the steps, and then you feel your body calming down. And so guided is easier with the audio track. Later on, after you've done it for a while, you don't need that. And we're now studying what happens with people's lives when they when they are using eco meditation, and especially what happens with their brains. And we found in various studies that after just the first couple of times they try it, their brain states start to change. Their left and right hemispheres are talking to each other much more effectively. And they're developing this brain wave called gamma, this high-frequency wave. It goes from about 30 cycles a second. Our neurons are firing at 30 times a second. And so they develop more and more gamma. Their gamma between left and right hemispheres increases. And within just a, a few tries, they're often hitting the same kind of gamma profile as meditation masters who've spent 10,000 hours or more. So again, even newcomers are able to do this. And then we see in about a month, the structure of the brain start to change. And the part of the brain that deals, that is associated with suffering, that is associated with self-referential thinking, where I'm, I'm, I'm very focused on my life and stuff that's gone wrong in my past, what my go wrong in my future, that part of the brain is called the default mode network, because our brain is just default to thinking about bad things in the past and bad things in the future. That's our just default setting of our brain. Very, very helpful to your ancestor 100,000 years ago to think about the snake that almost bit him yesterday and the snake that might bite him tomorrow, <laughs> but not very useful for us today. Mm -hmm. So that default mode network calms way down in the first 30 days of doing this. And then the compassion network lights up. And the compassion network is part of the complex of the brain that is responsible for joy, gratitude, awe, altruism. All of these positive emotions start to dramatically increase. So we dial down the part of the brain that is focused on cat catastrophizing and suffering. We dial up that part of the brain that is focused on just every positive emotion you can imagine, all these positive feelings and sensations. And so that happens, that brain structure starts to change within a month. So again, very, very effective to actually be remodeling your brain to be in the space of joy as a habit. And that just becomes after a while who you are. That's incredible. <laughs> I mean, especially in a month. And when you're saying like Zen monks, it took uh, take them like 10,000 of hours of meditation. <laughs> that, that time, who has this time right now, right? Um, in, yeah. our, in our busy world. So what kind of um, people approach you? So I know, yeah, you've done the studies and you're helping a lot of people with uh, PTSD. And are there people with the other problems? So why they approach you, why they uh, find the eco meditation? Like, do you know... <laughs> What, what people kind of struggle with the most and what changes then for them in, in their lives? Well, stress is a common mm. phenomenon to all of these kinds of um, ways of us feeling unhappy. So stress is part of PTSD, stress is part of anxiety, part of depression. And people are generally seeking something for stress release. Mm -hmm. It's important to find something and really get a stress relief program going in your own life because research shows that people who are stressed live much shorter lives. One famous study called the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study found that people who have childhood trauma and then don't heal it, people who have childhood trauma and then are just in that traumatized state for decades. They have more cancer, 
more heart disease, more diabetes, more suicide attempts, more smoking, all kinds of problems later on in their lives. And these problems are showing up at the age of 40, 50, 60 years old. They're much sicker, and then they have much uh, shorter lifespans. So stress literally is lethal. Stress will kill you. Mm -hmm. And that ability to look around at your environment and see what's a threat that was so useful to your ancestors many, many years ago. Now, if all we're doing is we're looking around us and we're looking for what's wrong in our money, in our parents, our children, our teammates, our job, our bodies, well, if um, our whole focus is on what's wrong, yeah. that same ability that was so good keeping your ancestors alive is literally killing you. I've done several studies of cortisol and people's cortisol rises when they're stressed. So mm -hmm. what happens when they do eco meditation is we've shown in research that their cortisol drops. In one study, we found that cortisol dropped about 37% in just a weekend of doing an eco meditation retreat intensive. So it drops really quickly, their immune system imp improves and all kinds of physiological um, shifts happen, like their blood pressure goes down, their heart rate goes down and they become much calmer. And it doesn't, again, take 10,000 years. And that's the beauty of science. We've been able to, to look at these Tibetan monks and Franciscan nuns and see how they are and then transfer all that knowledge and show people how to do this in just a month or two. Yeah. Well, again, really incredible because, yeah, that actually proves, right, that happiness, it's also healthy. It's also making you live longer, right? If you're like achieving the, the opposite of stress and you do meditation just to, to feel better, but also you become much healthier and you live longer, which is, yeah, uh, yeah like the positive effect. Yeah. Yeah, you'll feel you'll, you'll feel better day by day, and if you have if you have less negative thinking, less negative focus, more positive focus, you'll feel better in your body. We know it's affecting genes, we know it's affecting hormones, but cumulatively, if you keep on doing that day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, it shows up in longevity studies. And so, one big study published in the British Medical Journal found that over a 30-year period that people who were optimists lived on average 10 years longer than pessimists. So 10 years greater lifespan, 10 years more to enjoy your retirement, enjoy your grandchildren, travel, whatever you want to do. You get a lot more of that if you are taking care of yourself moment by moment, day by day, and releasing that negative thinking. Yeah, I know you have a lot of uh, links to studies on your website. Do you have that one as well? I would be very interested in in that. Actually. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's my main website is eftuniverse.com. Yeah, that's eft emotional freedom techniques. That's the tapping method that I teach because that's the quickest stress reduction method I, I found so far. People tap and you just watch layers and layers of stress peel away. They may, might come in like you know I, I worked with one. Uh, one one professor, I walked into this university to, to talk to a couple of the professors who ran the psychiatry department, and I thought I'd be talking about research to them. But the head of psychiatry at this university said, my colleague over here has a fear of flying. Would you just do the tapping method with her right this very moment? And I thought, well, I wasn't expecting to actually tap with her. I thought I'd be talking about uh, these methods, but I thought if she wants to do it, do it, I'll do it. And this this woman had become more and more fearful of flying in a plane, and she stopped flying completely about six years before, and it was affecting her career because with her being unable to fly, she couldn't go to professional conferences and present her work. Mm -hmm. So suddenly her world was becoming a lot smaller. She was struggling professionally because she couldn't share her work with other people. And so I began to tap with her, and we just talked about all of our fears of flying. And tapping is really simple. You just tap on these acupressure points. Again, the instructions are free on my website. And I tapped along with her on those, those fears of hers and got really specific because our fears are general. And then they're also very specific in that fear of flying is something that affects many, many people. But I wanted to know what exactly about flying bothered her. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be one little part of it. So we, we walked through the whole scenario of her driving to the airport and then and then going through security and then walking toward the gate and then getting on the plane. 
And I was testing all along to see what was triggering going to trigger her. And it turned out that what triggered her the most was the moment she clicked the seatbelt in, the sound of the seatbelt clicking, because it meant she couldn't get out. <laughs> oh. Fear of being trapped. So <clears throat> it wasn't the 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 airport, it wasn't the the worry about the plane not working. What it was primarily was that clicking sound of the the buckle of the seatbelt. And so we yeah. tapped on that one little sensory input and it went w- just totally away. She went from like a 10 out of 10 in terms of stress mm-hmm. down to an eight, down to a six, down to a four, two. Then she was a zero out of out of 10 for stress on that 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 clicking sound. And so she had a, a great result. Her fear of flying was was way down. And so that same day, she actually left the office and went and made a plane reservation to fly to the next conference, came back in the office and said, I feel great. I'll be flying. I, you know, my fear is gone. It just works that quickly. And we even have a have, a, have an app. For, called, for good. So you know that she went flying. Yeah. Work. Okay. Yeah, we have long-term studies. And usually once okay. you tap for a phobia, it is gone for forever. We had another woman who who was uh, mm-hmm. wanting to stop vaping. She she was she quit smoking, but she was vaping, and she read the studies showing vaping was bad for her health. And we have an app called Stress Solution. So she went on the Stress Solution app. She tapped with a practitioner there for twenty minutes, and then after she tapped with her on the Stress Solution app for only twenty minutes, went she she quit her ended her session, tapped some more herself. And that was it. Never vaped again. So people can get very, very quick results with EFT. That's great. Sorry. But actually, because now you used the word phobia, because that would have been my next question. So you could basically cure any phobia with, with tapping. That's what you're saying. Phobias are easy. PTSD is very quick. Some things are, are less quick, though, Nadine. For example, um, if somebody have, has a long-term problem that uh, they've had for decades, it's unlikely they'll see a, a, a shift in a session. It may take five, 10 sessions. Like we, we have guidelines that we've drawn up for hospitals and doctors and psychiatrists. And those guidelines are, we recommend we recommend 10 sessions for PTSD. So phobias, usually one session is enough. PTSD, we recommend 10 sessions. And then things like weight loss. If people have a persistent problem with food cravings and they're giving it to their cravings and they, they gain a lot of weight again sometimes there are one session breakthroughs usually you need to work with work with a practitioner and it may take you uh, a few months to change those problems and 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 release those cravings uh sabotage self-sabotage around relationships around work you may need uh, a real course of eft not just one session mm, okay and um, and you said you tested before, so I because I've, I've done it myself, so I'm uh, remembering. So you body test the the yes and no response. How is it called? Like before you you do the EFT, or like how do you figure out what's the real problem? Like the clicking of the seatbelt. Yes. Well, if you have a trained EFT practitioner, they they know how to do this. I mean, we, we they they go through a year long training, they get certified, and they know how to guide you to that point, that one thing that's the trigger. Mm. And the brain encodes these triggers in really interesting ways. And we don't always know why the brain works that way, but usually it's encoded through one of the five senses. So the trauma will usually be encoded through what you taste, smell, hear, touch, see. And you have to find the the exact trigger, which often the person doesn't know. And so get a trained clinical EFT practitioner is going to guide you through a session. Like if you go on stress solution, uh, if you get the app, do a session there, then you'll find that those people are experts in guiding you. They'll find the exact sensory input. Maybe for some people, it's not the clicking of the seatbelt. Maybe for some people, it's worry the plane's going to fall apart and fall out of the sky. Other people, they'll get a lot of uh, uh, anxiety around being in an enclosed space. So they have a fear of are uh, bacteria and viruses. I mean, it could be anything. Mm-hmm. To have a trained person to work you through to the actual trigger that is most relevant for you. So on the on the app, you're saying like you have people one on one working with people, or you have so you can, yes. you can book a session basically with someone, or you can choose a topic and then it's recommended how many sessions you should have for 
Oh, you can just do a search with, with someone right there on the app immediately. We have people who are there on the app. You just go on Stress Solution, and you can also see there's also a, the app's also on a website called mystresssolution.com. You just go on there, work with the practitioner one on one. They're live, they're there in their office, and they'll just work with you one on one. Your first session is free to give you a taste of, of tapping, and then they'll guide you past that point as well. And so, for a lot of simple things, just download my free manual from the website, tap yourself. But if you're stuck, if you're dealing with a persistent problem, go work with a practitioner. Mm, yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, because yeah, again, I tapped myself as well. But maybe we have to go right to the start now. I feel like, okay, EFT, emotional freedom techniques. So for everybody who has never heard of this, right? And then we already said, so you tap the meridian points in your body. And um, yeah, it's actually scientifically proven that it does help and has all the benefits you just mentioned. So I will put all the links um, you just mentioned in the show notes so people don't have to remember. Good. They can look it up and, and try themselves. But yeah, I mean, that's just... <laughs> Uh, yeah, blowing my mind. I don't know how I <laughs> didn't find this sooner. Actually, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And but then you said the eco meditation is also including tapping. That's what you. Yeah, we do a little bit of tapping at the beginning of eco meditation to release stress. And so there are two components here that. I teach. So I teach EFT. We have like four day classes, one day classes, all kinds of, of ways, a lot of free stuff on our websites. And so um, you, you can do EFT and that's to do with trauma. That really mm -hmm. is an effective way of releasing all the blocks that hold you back. But that's just part of being human is you want to be untraumatized. You want to release your your trauma, especially childhood trauma. And then you are in this place where your trauma is not dragging you into depression, anxiety, and stress. But then, while that is a good baseline, we also can reach elevated emotional states. And so in my book, Bliss Brain, I talk about St. Francis of Assisi and about people like St. Teresa of Avila, of Rumi, and how they were able to reach these elevated mental and emotional states. How do you get there? This isn't about releasing stress. This is about reaching these elevated states of consciousness where your full potential is present and you're able to let go of what I call in my books, local reality. You're no longer embedded in your local experience, your ordinary everyday experience. You're moving in your mind, your heart, your body to these elevated states of Rumi and Carlos Castaneda and all these, all these great teacher showed us that there are these elevated states of consciousness we can be at. And so you want to start to go there. And that's where meditation takes you. So each meditation takes you up there. Tapping solves the problem of stress. Mm, okay, very good. And now please, um, Dawson, just tell us, how did you actually get into this field? And how did you start your, your own journey of yeah, researching um, all of this? Yeah. By being miserable, Nadine. <laughs> like all of us. <laughs> That's why most people in personal growth are in it because they began by being miserable and they wanted a, a way out. So I began studying psychology when I was a teenager. And I also joined a spiritual community when I was 15 years old and went and lived on a communal farm and raised organic vegetables and did all these things, trying to study the great religions, the great spiritual traditions. And so I was trying to escape my own suicidal depression. And it, I, I made some progress, but when I made the commitment to meditate every day, and then when I learned tapping, that really shifted things to me in a big way. So it was driven out of my own desperation, really, initially. Mm -hmm. And I got a little bit happy, happier by learning about the world's religions and about spiritual practice. But when I began to meditate every single day, and when I began to tap, that's when I found that all of those problems, all of those psychological uh, deficits that had, had been with me for so long just started to fall away. And I then began to hit these elevated states. And then um, at a certain point, I had this, this catastrophic life event where um, I, I lived at that time in Northern California. And one night, my wife woke me up at 12.45 a.m. I looked out the window and there was a wildfire just tearing down the opposite hill toward our home. And we had to escape just when we just barely escaped the flames. And a lot of people died. A lot of people didn't escape the flames. Uh, 5,000 homes were destroyed that night. It was a catastrophe for, for us. 
And um, I was in my early 60s at the time. And yet, as I meditated in the year after that, I mean, I'd lost everything. I lost my my home, my office, all our possessions. We we just had a we, we we as we as we drove out of the fire, we just barely escaped as all the trees around us were bursting into flames. So we had this. We just literally lost everything in our lives, every single possession we had. And so after losing everything like that, I in the following year. I was meditating, I was tapping, I was doing all the things I teach, and I found I was still happy. And people were like, whoa, this guy just lost everything and is still happy. So I wrote the book Bliss Brain to explain all of these neurochemicals, anandamide, the bliss molecule, serotonin, the satisfaction molecule, dopamine, the motivation molecule, Mm -hmm. all of these things are going on in your brain, and that's what gives you resilience. And so in chapter seven of Bliss Brain, I talk about post traumatic growth, where the traumas of your life become the fuel for transformation. And so for roughly two thirds of people, they have a trauma like the fire for me, and they grow as a result. One third of people have a trauma, and they don't grow, they move into PTSD. But for two thirds of people, we actually use those traumas as a way to move into higher levels of integration. So we can apply these things in our lives and you start to get so happy. I mean, with this brain, you just feel so good every day and you definitely want to share that with people around you. So that's why I do this now. Yeah, (laughs) thank you so much for sharing and for writing this book and also the books before. So I'll also put all your your books in the show notes. So um, yeah, I want to read it too. And, um, but I mean, what um, the... Define. I mean, the difference between the one third and the two thirds of people. Like, why is that? Do you have any explanation for why would you, yeah, turn it into into growth or into? Yeah, that's a very good question. And one of the big factors is childhood trauma. If you were traumatized as a child, if you had traumatic events that went on around you, and those include things like the death of a parent, divorce is very traumatic, a parent who was mentally ill, a parent who was in jail, all of those things are severe stressors for children. And so when those children become adults, if they then have a trauma, like a car crash or a bad divorce, or they're in in, in a war zone, that then triggers PTSD. And people who don't have those childhood traumas or who are able to be resilient through them then can handle things as adults. So there's a strong association between having PTSD and childhood trauma. People who weren't traumatized, people who heal their trauma are able to then use those adult challenges as the fuel for growth. Mm, Fuel for growth. I like that. And um, tell us, (laughs) please, is it possible for everybody to be to be happy or to be blissful or to reach (laughs) or is there (laughs) is there any limitation? (laughs) You know, it's an interesting question. And what I'm remembering right now is you asked if everyone can be joyful. I'm remembering a little girl called Amelie. And if you go on our website and uh, type in the word Haiti, the country of Haiti, H-A-I-T-I, you'll find a, a seven-minute video in French and English that tells the story of, of Amelie and a group of other children. And so there was a big earthquake in Haiti in 2010, and many people were killed, and there were over 250,000 children whose parents died. So Haiti is already the poorest country in the world. Suddenly, there are thousands of people killed in the earthquake. And then there are a quarter of a million children who have often lost their homes and now have lost their parents in the earthquake. And so it was a humanitarian disaster in 2010. And a group of volunteers that I've worked with for many, many years went to Haiti and worked with some of those children and some of those caregivers. And so these are people who, you know, you ask, can anyone be happy? These are people already in the poorest country in the world with very few resources, and now they have this catastrophe. And Amelie was 10 years old at the time, and she, at the time of the earthquake, had been been in a building. The building had collapsed, and her mother was with her, and her mother was killed when the building collapsed. Amelie was not killed, and for two days, 
it took two days for rescuers to dig to dig out the people who who survived and those the bodies of those who hadn't. So for two days, Amelie was trapped in the collapsed building with the dead body of her mother. And since it had been two years since the earthquake, she hadn't spoken a word. She was so traumatized, she literally didn't say anything after that. And so in this little video on my website, you watch, you see Amelie, you see all the other kids, and we're tapping with them. We're doing EFT with them. The, this, this, this team of volunteers is doing EFT with them. So if you're asking, can, you, can anyone be happy? That's a situation in which uh, there's so much trauma that can it be possible? And what you see is us working. People are our are, are volunteers working with these children, including Amelie. And at a certain point, we give Amelie a teddy bear. A teddy, she's holding this teddy bear, this little stuffed animal, and she begins to do tapping, but on the teddy bear. And so she's like trying to comfort the teddy bear. She starts to talk about to the teddy bear about losing mommy. And so she's talking not to a person, but to this this little being, the bear. And she starts to speak. And by the end of the this little seven-minute documentary, Amelie's running around with the other children, playing, laughing, and she's got her life back. And so absolutely, even people who have absolutely wrenching stress and shattering experiences can be happy. Now, it's going to take some doing to, to, to make that change. If you've been in the habit of negative thinking, if you've been in the habit of catastrophizing and rumination and letting yourself give in to your negative thoughts, you're going to need to be determined to shift those, those patterns. And I watch some people who just don't have the determination to do it. Like I have had the determination in my own life. I've said, I'm just not going to go the way of my ancestors. Mm -hmm. Our ancestors used to just give into negative thinking and, and catastrophize about their lives. And I, mean, I remember growing up and people in my family would sit around and just talk about all the bad things going on in, in the world. Now I make a point, Nadine, of hanging out, spending time with people who hang around and talk about all the positive things going on in their consciousness, in their hearts, in their volunteering, in their service. And so those are the kinds of shifts you want to do. And yeah. it takes determination to do that. And it takes just not being that primitive human being looking for the bad in everything and everyone. It takes being a new human being and, and prioritizing your happiness, tapping, working with a practitioner, meditating every day. But if you do that again, the benefits to you over time, longevity, a longer health span, having a much better experience every day. I mean, I, I wake up every day and meditate and I feel so joyful. That's my baseline. And then you're resilient. You know, your house may burn down. You may go through a divorce. You may have a, you may lose your job, but you are then you've turned all of that experience into brain wiring that is now so so set in the emotional centers of your brain that when bad things happen, you are still you still this fundamental ability to be happy and joyful and transcend all of that stress. So it takes determination, but the payoff is well worth it. Mm, definitely, I agree. So would you agree on um, the quote or that? I mean, happiness is a, a decision. It's a decision, but you need tools. And there are people who decide to be happy and then don't do a whole lot about it. But you decide mm -hmm. to be happy. And in psychology, we find that when you make a declaration, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to, you know, uh, get over this, this problem I've had. I'm going to release that negative thinking. When your conscious mind says that, all of the parts of the psyche that don't agree with that pop to the surface. Mm -hmm. And they give you more reasons why you should be sad, but you, know, be, you should be worried. You should, all these voices come in. So there's a lot of work to do there. And you'll find that the act of declaring for positivity raises all the negative parts of self, the self-sabotaging parts of self. Mm -hmm. In our, our live workshops, we actually have a whole day where we find all those negative voices that they're subconscious, but they're dragging you down and making sure that, that year after year, you don't achieve your aims. So it's really important that you have the ability and the tools to not just the determination, but the actual methods required like EFT, mm -hmm. like meditation to overcome those old patterns. Okay, because it's patterned in the brain, but I would say it's also kind of stored in the body, right? I mean, the emotions, Absolutely. the trauma, and it's all like, yeah. yeah. 
Um, okay, because I think there are also a lot of people that actually didn't experience trauma. I think we all have some childhood trauma in terms of like we cried and nobody was there to pick us up. And yes. Us, or we felt lost or lonely or or that. But I mean, like let's say no, no massive uh, trauma or no. Um, yeah, I mean, we didn't all go to war or we like didn't have all these horrible experiences. They're just people that have a quite normal life maybe and even not really big problems but they're still not really happy <laughs> like yeah you know yeah I, I have a therapist tell me I'm a therapist and I had a really good childhood and I can't figure why having been a therapist my whole professional career having had a good childhood why am I still anxious why am I still depressed yeah. and it may not be that you know you had your 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 mother die in, in the building and collapse of an earthquake but were you not heard? Did you have parents who didn't really, who were just too busy to really tune into you and listen to you? Uh, did you have experiences of loss? We've all had experiences of loss. I mean, maybe your 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 dog was run over by a car. Maybe your pet rabbit was left out in the sun and died. I mean, your, your you know your grandparents certainly died. And that you may have been close to them. I mean, all all kinds of things have happened to ordinary people, and we need to deal with those losses, and so we don't carry those forward into the future. Mm, yeah, definitely, that makes sense. Um, yeah, it makes so much sense. <laughs> That's what I say as well. So okay, we all have to take uh, make a decision and then be determined. And now we have all your great tools. <laughs> yes. To yeah, to do so and to be and feel blissful. Very good. Uh, okay, so Dawson, at the end of the podcast, I always ask the same three questions. And the first one is, what does happiness mean to you? Happiness to me means being yourself. It means realizing that you're an infinite being in a physical body for a while. May you may have a lifespan of 10 years, 50 years, 100 years, 150 years, however long you're here. Happiness means recognizing that who I am is not this body. A great um, Indian sage called Ramana Maharshi said that when he was when he was in pain, he had cancer toward the end of his life. And he was saying that people said to him, you know, Ramana, are you in pain? And he said, my body is in pain. I am not in pain. He recognized that he was more than the body. So happiness is recognizing that we are that infant self. We have all kinds of challenges on the level of our local selves, our local lives. But And if you think that's who you are, then if you do well in the local sense, then you feel, you feel good. If you do badly in the local sense, then you feel bad. And you want to escape that illusion that you are that local self. We are infinite beings of love and joy and compassion and wisdom and when we meditate we have access to that whole realm of awareness so you want to make sure you're you're doing that for yourself that you're accessing that and then happiness at the local level at the at the level of ordinary awareness every day becomes inevitable because you are hooking up with the non-local that infinite universe every day and you know that's who you are. So happiness is escaping the illusion that you are this local body, mind, and heart, and knowing that you're infinite consciousness. Mm. Wow, well, very much like this answer. And then, uh, so I know one thing is meditation, <laughs> but what do you do to be happy? You tap away your trauma, you release your trauma. If you try and hit the mountaintop, try and achieve those states, and you don't heal trauma, then that festers so you need to tap and release all of those early life issues and then come to peace with your past come to peace with people in your life and so the concrete thing you do is you make that decision and then you tap tap away and release trauma and then make that commitment to meditating every single day i know when i made that commitment it changed every part of my life within a couple of months and we've seen mm. now on brain scans that it does that so meditate tap there are lots of other things you do as well you watch positive media listen to positive music hang around positive people and really make that commitment to bringing those values into your whole life mm. all right good. how often um, do you need to tap like every day I tap whenever I'm annoyed or whenever I'm uh, emotionally dysregulated, if I feel amb ambivalent about something, 
Um, my wife and I tap together. So if we have to talk about something emotional that has an emotional component to it, then we always tap while we're talking. So we're releasing negative energy while we while we talk. So um, yeah, you want to tap on a regular basis. Mm, wow. Okay. And then what was the happiest moment in your life? Every moment. I just wake up in the morning. I wake up incredibly happy. I go to bed incredibly happy. I'm happy almost every moment of every day. And um, every once in a while, I have a bad day or a bad two or three days. I just, like anyone, I have, I have to work on my own negative thinking. And sometimes I, I am pulled into it. Mm -hmm. And so when I am, I, I think, wow, this this sucks. <laughs> it sucks to feel negative. Mm -hmm. And this is this used to be my whole life. This used to be every day for me. Mm -hmm. And now I'm having a bad day. And it's like, wow, I definitely am glad I rescued myself from that. So um yeah. Uh, yeah. So every day I just wind up feeling wonderful. And again, you know, good things happen, bad things happen, things you want happen, things you don't want happen. And you just have this. That's when you've turned, I talk about this in Bliss Brain, you've turned a state of happiness into a trait mm. so now it's the fundamental nature of your personality wow i think that's something we all want to achieve <laughs> yeah yeah okay and then on your journey i mean you mentioned that you started very early and then getting into spirituality and this communities um and i know you yeah wrote three books is that right yes mm -hmm. so i will put these in the show notes but i always like to ask also is there a book which changed your life you would like to recommend or... yeah uh there are some amazing authors so my books are the genie in your genes which talks about how these elevated states change the expression of genes in your body it turns genes on and off in your body another my next book was called mind to matter how it changes things in, in your body how when you have shifts in consciousness you actually shift the world outside of yourself and then this brain explains these elevated states of the mystics mm -hmm. and so those came out of me reading other books um there are many other fantastic books um how enlightenment changes your brain by andrew newberg is fantastic altered states mm -hmm. altered traits by um by daniel goldman and richard davidson shows how we turn states of well-being into long-term enduring brain traits how we turn those feelings into neurons uh that's just a brilliant book in that space jack canfield's book the success principles is the 64 principles of a successful life so many many books many mystical books the books of paul brunton like the secret path or um the the path to enlightenment there are many many of these inspirational authors you can read you can go back 2000 years and read the crest jewel illumination by by shankara or by ramana maharshi who am i so there are all there are many many inspiring pointers on the way and the world is full of these resources it's a matter of using them and applying them in your own life yeah wow <laughs> okay there were a lot of recommendations i will all look them up and put them in the show notes um but yeah with uh, your books and we'll um all your links and so people can find you and they can find your app and they can find the meditation and uh, yeah i get to know more about eft and try for themselves so i think yes. it's super super powerful so Thank you so much, yeah. Eric Hoffman, for taking the time and uh, speaking to me and our community um, on the Happiness Safari podcast. And also, yeah, for your work and that you actually transformed your life and you chose to, uh, yeah, go that path and for, yeah, spreading all your knowledge and keep researching and um, making yourself and other people happy. So I think, yeah. <laughs> well, Nadine, thanks for sharing. Though. I appreciate you sharing that, that good news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, always happy to share good news. That's uh, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a joy. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you for listening until the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I think it sounds fascinating. So I tried the eco meditation and I am practicing it now on a regular basis and I must say I can confirm that it's truly relaxing and I'm always in a very blissful state after that. And it's only 20 minutes so there is a recording on the website I will put in the show notes for you so you can learn more. It includes EFT but also you can um, use the tapping 
and as Dawson described um, yeah you can just go on the website and find a practitioner and even have a session for free to try it out so I think it's such an amazing offer and project and I'm so grateful to everything yeah he has done uh, for us in terms of research as well so Yeah, if you still think you cannot reach your goals with meditation, try this meditation. Give it a try and uh, yeah, I hope it will maybe change your life. Let me know in the comments on my Instagram channel, Nadine Anna Yoga. And yeah, have a chat with me, text me. I respond to every message. I'm always so happy to hear from you. And I hope you're well. And if you're in Lagos, then come around this Friday for some laughter yoga workshop with ecstatic dance and heart opening, heart sharing at the end on Friday at the Casa del Corpo. It starts at 6 p.m. And uh, I would love to yeah, share that with you as my biggest mission is to make people happy and laughter yoga is such a great tool for that. And next Next weekend I have a beautiful retreat here in Portugal. It's just a weekend from Friday to Sunday. So if you're working, if you are maybe living here, you're digital nomad, but you need some time away, you need to clear your head, you maybe want some healing towards the end of the year, things you want to leave behind, um, whatever it is, this is a great opportunity. It's a yoga and healing retreat where we will go very deep and do the work and yeah be in nature so I will post another video with my co-facilitator Kasham on my Instagram so check that out and contact me if you spontaneously want the last spot for our retreat next weekend uh, from the 9th until the 11th and yeah Uh, there are also a couple of spots left for Bali, um, also that you find on my Instagram and on my website. Again, I put everything in the show notes for you and now I just wish you a wonderful day, evening, wherever you are in the world and I hope you're well, I hope you try the meditation and yeah, I hope from the bottom of my heart that you are becoming happier, healthier and holier every single day of your life and I'm here to support you, you're not alone. And I'm so happy you're here. All the best. Talk to you soon. Bye.